Hey everybody, welcome back. In today's video, we're finding out once and for all what the best secondaries in OG Mono for 2 are. I will start by saying that this tier list is not my opinion. This tier list is based solely on the objective best weapons in the game. And if you think that I'm wrong, then you're wrong. And you can feel free to tell me about it in the comment section. All right, so we're only really concerned about the first column and a half here. We're going to start off with a bang with the RPG. Oh, the RPG is capable of dealing out some serious damage and is probably the most explosive weapon in the entire game. Unlike the other weapons on this list, this weapon can only be used to kill up to two groups of enemies and then it's done. It's okay at shooting down stationary killstreaks, but overall it's really just meant for anti-personnel stuff. So that being said, I'm going to drop it in the A tier for now. It's incredibly powerful, but at the same time, it's not going to be, like, the best secondary in this game. So if the RPG gets the A tier, the AT4, which essentially is a worse version of the RPG, that does have some vehicle lock-on, but only gets one rocket. So it's useful for taking out Harriers and attack helicopters, but it's kind of useless against Pavlos and such. This launcher doesn't quite make the B tier, and in fact, I either put it in C or an F simply because it's outclassed in every one of its singular uses. Stinger is better for taking out killstreaks, and the RPG is better at taking out personnel. Now, you could say that it's more versatile, and for that reason, we're keeping it out of the F tier, but I would rather have either the RPG or the Stinger out. Speaking of the Stinger, the Stinger is going to come out here, and it's going to start as our first S tier secondary in the game. The reason I put the Stinger in S tier is because it is quick, lock-on target, Two rocket shots at any kill streak in the game. Chopper gunners, gone in the blink of an eye. Harriers, one shot kills. Pavlos go down instant. It's an amazing secondary to have. If the primary you're using is good on ammo and it's versatile, like an assault rifle with scavenger, well, the stinger is a perfect secondary. The one downside of the stinger is that it protrudes in the vertical direction from your body a lot. So when you're hiding in a head glitch spot, where you're running around the map, you are a lot more visible. That's a pretty big downside, but still, if you are concerned at all about destroying killstreaks, the Stinger is by far the best option in the game. Next up, we have the Thumper. Now, the Thumper is essentially a noob tube in secondary form. It shoots those 40 millimeter grenades, it has large explosive impact, it has that parabolic trajectory or a curved shot with lots of dip. And overall, it's a very powerful weapon. If it wasn't for noob tubes kind of taking over this game, you'd probably see a lot more Thumper. Now, some people do do noob tubes, but without one-man army, and instead they put on Scavenger. And when they run Scavenger, they'll run a noob tube and the Thumper to have a total of four grenade shots per Scavenger pack. It's actually it's a pretty good way to substitute out one-man army. And in those situations, the Thumper is actually really, really powerful. Now, I personally believe if even if you are running that Scavenger setup, the RPG does the same job as the Thumper, but better. In fact, if your assault rifle that you're using the noob tube on can't reach somebody because of the curved trajectory, the RPG will be able to reach it, whereas the Thumper won't. So I personally put the RPG above this one pretty significantly while the Thumper is going into the beat. Last but not least for the launchers, we have the Javelin. The Javelin has that long distance lock on to vehicles or terrain, which is pretty cool. Then it shoots out and then the, the Javelin missile flies high up into the sky and then land straight down. This thing has always been kind of a meme weapon, but its explosive yield is massive. Now, it doesn't kill killstreaks right away like the Stinger, right? The Stinger can destroy things instantly. The Javelin, when you shoot at a vehicle, it shoots at the vehicle and it sends the rocket sky high and then it comes down, so there's a delay. Putting the Javelin in F tier would be a true disservice. Now, which means we're probably gonna be looking at either the C or the B tier. I'm kind of torn because it's not as good as the RPG and the Stinger, but it is so fun. And this is not a fun tier list. This is an effective tier list. But what I'll say is this. On certain maps, like Scrapyard, like High Rise, this thing goes crazy. On other maps, it's pretty useless. But for me, I'm going to say that if you are an experienced Javelin player and you know the right angles, this thing could even be a tier. But if you're below average Javelin player, I think it's in the C tier. And for that reason, we're going to put it in the B tier right behind the Thumper. All right, now launchers are done. Let's go into the handguns. I split the handguns into two major categories. First off, we have the semi-automatic low power, which is the USP-45 and the M9. 
Now, the USP-45, like in its name, it shoots a 45 caliber round, which is a much larger round than the M9. The M9 shoots a 9mm round, which has less stopping power than a 45. But either way, these weapons act very similarly in-game. I think the idea is that the USP has a little bit more damage and that the M9 has a little bit more accuracy. But at the end of the day, they honestly perform pretty similarly. Both the USP-45 and the M9 are great single. They're great as a Kimbo. They have tactical knife options. The USP-45 has a fancy knife glitch where a third arm will come out of your body when you go to knife with it, which is kind of cool that I've heard. However, when it comes to handguns, I cannot honestly say that I think I put them above the B tier. I'm going to put them above the thumper, but below the RPG. That's simply because I think they get outclassed by a lot of secondaries, including a secondary in its own weapon class. Yes, if you're looking for a good sidearm, that can come out quick. Because remember, handguns have the unique attribute in Call of Duty Modern Warfare 2 that when you swap to them, they get increased swap speed. You know the old saying that swapping weapons is faster than reloading? Well, that's most true for the handguns. And so I can't really put any of the handguns below B tier because in a pinch, when you're shooting at somebody and then you run out of ammo, swapping to a USP-45 or swapping to an M9 is perfectly acceptable. Next up is the Magnum. Now, if you asked me a couple months ago where I'd put the Magnum, I would probably tell you in the C or the B tier. But as of late, I have no choice but to put it in the S tier above the Stinger. Now, the Magnum has some really interesting properties. Number one, its base damage is 50 at close range and drops off to 35 at long range. That's the highest damage in the class, period. The Desert Eagle is tied at 50 base damage for close range, but drops off to 30, so 5 less at long range. The reason why this is important, because the Magnum does not depend on stopping power whatsoever. I'll say it again, Magnum does not depend on stopping power whatsoever. If we run these numbers, and here we have my handy dandy calculator, the Magnum has 50 base damage, and times 2 for 2 shots is 100 damage, right? That's a kill. Easily at close range. Now, if you add stopping power, right, times 1.4, you end up with 70 damage, which is still a two shot kill, meaning you don't need to put on stopping power. But what if you think about headshots? Well, for a headshot, you take your 50 base damage times your 1.4 headshot multiplier equals 70 times your stopping power multiplier, which is 1.4, and you get 98. So the Magnum cannot. One shot kill to the head in this game. Unlike weapons like the FAL, adding stopping power and a headshot does not grant you the one shot kill. What if an enemy is at long range? Will stopping power help me then? Well, let's find out. 35 damage base at longest range. This is important because 35 times 3 is 105, putting you just over the three shot kill threshold, right? Something like the Desert Eagle, where it has 30 damage times 3, is only 90. So at long range, the Desert Eagle is a four-shot kill, whereas the Magnum is only a three-shot kill. Well, let's talk about stopping power. Magnum, 35 base damage, times stopping power, 1.4, equals 49. What does this mean? This means that at the maximum effective range, if we hit them with two shots, we're only getting 98 damage. So there is almost no situation in which you need to have stopping power for the Magnums to work at all. Weapons like... The Magnum 45, like the WAD 2000, like the UMP 45 that have the special relationship with stopping power, meaning that they don't get that much stronger with it, are incredibly powerful. You are running any class that doesn't want to use stopping power. If you want to use hardline, if you want to use cold blooded, if you want to use lightweight, and you're looking for a secondary that can synergize with that, the Magnum's your go to. It is the most effective secondary in the game when you're not running stopping power, period. And it's a Kimbo version, goes absolutely crazy at close range. It is exceptionally accurate. It fires exceptionally fast. It cannot be stopped, even from the likes of the G18, if you're accurate. So the Magnum takes its place in the S tier, and it might even be getting it an even better placement than that, if I can come up with one. Next up, we have the Desert Eagle. And the Desert Eagle has a lot of the same properties as the Magnum, except that its damage falls off more. It's less accurate. Yes, it has more rounds. But honestly, I cannot recommend using the Desert Eagle over any other handgun in this game. And for that, it gets the C tier, and it might even be going in F. Okay, now we're down to the two most popular categories of secondaries, the machine pistols and the shotguns. And for good reason. Machine pistols fire fast, and shotguns 
pack a huge punch. So let's do it. The PP-2000, the first machine pistol in Call of Duty Modern Warfare history. It's also the first secondary that I could tell you truly felt like a primary weapon. You could run a range of attachment on it, silencer, red dot sight, extended mag, all are effective. Something that's important to note is that all of these secondaries so far lack range, meaning it's hard to kill enemies at range with any of them. PP-2000 shines in that regard. It fires heavily accurate at range. And so for that reason, it's going in the S tier. As of right now, for me, it's above the Magnum, simply because it does kill at range. If you are running a build that likes to play at those medium ranges, and you run out of ammo, and you want something that can be effective at the medium range against targets that you're probably already shooting at, PP-2000 is your best option. All the glory and the praise I give to the PP-2000, unfortunately, the TMP is everything but worse. It has a small magazine size, low damage, the muzzle flash seems to be ludicrous. I can't see what I'm shooting at when I'm using it. It doesn't kick that much, but it's because it shoots so fast, it does heavily rely on extended magazine. So while I am sorry to say it, I am putting it in the C tier just above the Desert E. If I had to choose between having one of these two weapons, I would choose the TMP. Now don't be too sad for the TMP because a very similar weapon pops up in Modern Warfare 3 2011, the MP9, and it dominates the secondaries. Okay, now we have a hotly debated battle between M93 Rafika and the G18s. Both of these weapons are most often used in their akimbo version, and both of them are very, very strong. It's really hard to put your finger on which one is exactly better. Any argument I can make for one, I can make for the other one. Rafikas depend a little bit more on accuracy. I would say the Rafika are a little bit more effective from further distances, whereas the G18 is way better at close range. But if you're accurate, they're both about the same. And as you probably guessed, they're both going in the S tier. Now, our S tier is getting a little bit crowded. But as we go along, if I have to, you know, adjust the curve, as they say, then we will adjust the curve. But this is just to show you guys that the secondaries in this game are amazing. You really can't go wrong with a lot of these options. Okay, the shotguns, and this is where I might ruffle some feathers, right? I know a lot of people are big fans of the Spaz-12. When I put out my poll for the best secondaries in the game, a lot of people were saying the Spaz-12. And I could see why. First shotgun in the game, it's got high damage, one-shot potential, a lot of fun. Back in the day, if you queued up Mono for 2 and you were one-shotting people with the Spaz-12, you would think to yourself, this weapon's amazing. And you know what? It is amazing. But it's not as amazing as the other shotguns. I am sorry to say. It fires slower than the other shotguns. The Spaz lacks a useful attachment. It doesn't really have one that jumps out at you. Run FMJ for more damage through walls. You can run extended mag if you want to use it as a primary. But both of those are just okay. The grip, in my opinion, is entirely useless. Despite people thinking that it gives you more range. I do not believe it does. I trust the description in the game when it tells me that it reduces vertical recoil. But the Spaz does the job of a one-shot shotgun. It does depend a little bit on stopping power or steady aim, which is the story for most of these shotguns, to be honest with you. But I can't, in good conscience, put it in the S tier. It's just not going in the S tier. For me, it's going in the A tier and not anything above it. The AA-12, on the other hand, is basically just a Spaz with a little bit less range with way more firepower. A-12 is just an absolute beast of a weapon. When you are killed by the AA-12, you feel like it's unfair, like you didn't have a chance. Someone's refiring around the corner with a shotgun going boom, 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 boom. It's not fair. Now, it is held back by a low magazine size, but the extended mag does do a great job fixing this. If a weapon is attachment dependent, like the AA-12 for extended mag or the EMP for extended mag, right? It's not necessarily a problem if no other attachment is useful for it. The TMP has other useful attachments, like the red dot sight. The AA-12 doesn't really need another attachment. Grip isn't that effective. FMJ isn't that great. You could say a silencer is okay, but it vastly reduces the effective range. So because there's no other attachment that works that great for it, extended mag is just that much better. For that reason, it's going in the S tier. Pretty plainly, I believe to be the best secondary in the game. Now the M10 and the Striker, I will refer you to my versus video where I directly compare these two in gameplays, and I can honestly tell you that I put the Striker in the A tier above the Spaz, and the M10 in the C tier 
somewhere down here. I mean, it's really not that great. And here's why. Both the Striker and the M10 are semi-automatic shotguns. The M10 touts more damage. I'll give it to you. However, in my testing, it didn't feel like it had more damage at all than the Striker. It might have, it might have had a little bit. But overall, I believe that the Striker had very comparable damage. And the Striker, with the cylindrical drum on it, a lot more tube capacity. The M10 only gave me, what, like five or six rounds with extended mag on? It's abysmal. You can't run, go around on rampages with the M10 the way you can with the Striker. Now, I will say that the M10 has super satisfying sound and recoil design. It feels great to use, but for effectiveness, it's just nowhere close to the Striker, and it's just nowhere close to the other shotguns. I'm sorry. Next up, we have the Ranger. Now, the Ranger is going to be kind of hard for me to place. One, I haven't used it a ton. And two, it's a low-range double-barrel shotgun that suffers a little bit from what the M10 does with the low magazine size or the, you know, the low tube capacity. But going on major rampages with the Ranger is difficult. It's not that easy to do. As you fire your shots to kill one person, another person comes out of the woodwork and you have nothing left. If you had the AA-12, you'd have a lot left. If you had the Spaz, you'd have another round already chambered. But with the Ranger, you're probably in the middle of a reload and you're going down. However, the Akimbo version does have incredibly high damage. Pretty good accuracy in one shot range, honestly. I wouldn't put it above the Spaz, but it's definitely going to be going above the M10. So I'm going to be putting it in the B tier, just above the USP4. All right, next up, we have the Model 1887. Now, the Model 1887, to me, is what the Ranger is, but better. You can fire more shots before reloading. It has longer damage range. It, to me, it's just everything the Ranger is supposed to be, but better. Lever action is sick. I'm going to be putting it in the A tier above the Spaz 12 and just below the Strike. Okay, so that's all of them ranked. Now, let's go ahead and create a bell curve in a way that we have less weapons in the S tier and more weapons in some of the other tiers. We're gonna have to make some hard decisions. First weapon that is getting dropped, removed for me is the Desert Eagle, the F tier. I think it's a pretty clear decision. There's really no reason to be using the Desert Eagle at all, at all in this game. Honestly, not worth your time. Now, one weapon I can move from S into the A tier is the Stinger, and here's why, okay? We're gonna get real nitpicky now, stick with me. The Stinger is good for destroying killstreaks. However, it does protrude a lot from your body vertically, like I mentioned. It's a pretty big downside. It also does not help you at all against personnel. So if you run out of ammo for whatever reason, popping to the stinger grants you nothing. It, it does nothing for you. So you're kind of stuck using sleight of hand in whatever class that you're using because you need to have that maximum uptime because the stinger just doesn't help. On top of that, if you want to be immune to kill streaks, right? If you're destroying kill streaks just for yourself to stay alive, then you could just run cold blooded with the Magnum 45, like even better. So the Stinger, while very useful at destroying kill streaks, I do I do not put it in the S tier for secondary weapons. Let's go ahead and add an OP tier just to differentiate ourselves a little bit. Now I know what people might say in the comments, and that is every weapon in this game is OP. That's what made it so fun. Even in a game like Mono for 2, where there's a lot of great weapons, there are still certain weapons that are better than others. Would you agree with me that the ACR is better than the F2000? I would think you would. So yes, while most weapons in this game have a niche that make it the best at something, some weapons are better than others. And for that reason, and to finish out our bell curve with almost perfect synergy, I'm putting the AA-12 in the OP tier. It is the best secondary in this game if you're really tryharding and Need something that can clear out close range and be the best close range weapon in the entire game. Nothing will beat AA-12. Hey, okay, that's going to be it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed the breakdown of the best secondaries in OG Mono Warfare 2. If you disagree with some of these placements, let me know in the comments. I am down to have a cordial discussion in the comments about why the AT-4 is actually supposed to be in the S tier. Or why the M10 is better than the Striker. If you've got some info or some tech that I don't know about that makes a weapon better or worse than I think it is... Let me know. I'm down to learn about this game just as much as you are. Hey, okay, and with that, like the video if you like the video. Subscribe to the channel to see more videos like this one. And I'll see you in the next one. See ya.